Good morning. How's everybody doing on this first Advent morning? Beautiful Sunday morning. My name's Greg. For those of you who don't know me, I'll be your liturgist for today. And uh, the announcements have been scrolling along. Are there any announcements not printed in the bulletin or on the board that we need to be aware of? We need a couple more Advent readers. We need a we need two more Advent readers. Do you know what week's off the top of your head? I know next week's taken. The third, the third and fourth week. Third and fourth week. So if you're interested in that, make sure you see Susan Ensinger and get signed up. Anybody else? We could use some more liturgists. We could use some liturgists. Margie. We'll be taking place by that order until December 11th. December 11th is the deadline for point set up orders. Anyone else? Okay, I know Pastor Monica has one. She informed me of that, so I'm going to let her take over here. I'd just like to say a big thank you to everyone that was here yesterday and did all the decorating. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, it's just beautiful, so thank you. I was on my way to help decorate, and right there on 901, there's always accidents. Well, it was a school bus and just uh, one of those real... Well, the car only looks like it's this big. I mean, I know it's bigger than that, but they're, they're real small cars. Um, I, I don't believe there was anyone hurt, but everyone was rerouted southbound on 81, so I was, well, I, needless to say, I didn't get here to decorate, but um, those of you that were here did a, a fabulous job. It looks great, so. Thank you for all of your hard work. Uh, 
Thank you, Rob. We'll continue by having the lighting of the Advent candle. Thank you, Rob, Susan, and Ellen. Would you please stand if you're able, and we will sing the first verse of the Advent song. And if you want to follow along, it's in the new book on page 2090, singing the first verse. Again, that's on the screen or found on page 2069 in the blue hymnal. Jesus' name above all, above all names, we'll sing this twice. Count on page two.
exalted. standing for the call to worship. Let us read responsibly. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Lord in God's house we shall find hope and healing. In God's house we shall find forgiveness and friendship. Come, let us go to the house of the Lord. Come, let us sing our praises to God who loves and redeems us. Amen. Please be seated, and can we have the children come up front for children's time? Thursday, you get to have number one. 
Then Friday, number two. Three on Saturday, and so on. All the way up till the day of... Jesus' birthday! Yes, Christmas and Jesus' birthday. Excellent, excellent. So I have a calendar for everybody, but let's pray first. And then I'll make sure everybody gets a calendar. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, that's right before. Yes. You're right. Well, you can look at that calendar to know for sure that you have the right date for this calendar so you get your piece of chocolate. So Thursday's the first there. Okay? Oh, M and M's might fit in it too. Yeah, but I think there's other kind of chocolate in here too. M and M's might shake around too much. Well, let's pause for a word of prayer, okay? Dear God, we thank you for our church New Year, and we look forward to the birth of your Son Jesus. That we're counting the days for His birth. We thank you for sending your one and only Son, and we pray this in your holy and precious name. Amen. Now let me get everybody a calendar. We kept our eyes open. You kept your eyes open. Yeah. You did. Hey, Martha. Hey, Martha. I'd like to have someone to congregate and just come in back. Okay, now listen to what listen to what Mr. Carter is saying. All right, so about three weeks ago, I talked in the pulpit about a mission to Japan. A friend of mine that I went to in January 2020 uh, decided to leave after 15 years because of devastation there, pirates of being killed and all that. And they were kind of stuck because they couldn't leave due to fear of being kidnapped or worse bodily harm or what have you. I got something in the mail on Tuesday uh, associated with something I did for them in 2020. I had some things mailed to me when I took them out in 2020, so it was on my heart to reach out to them to see how things made out. It's a little this, and I'm just going to read what they wrote back. So this is on Tuesday. I said, hope all is well with you, with you, Chris, and the kids. And I blessed them uh, out of love. It's a right track. Same day. I am nice to hear from you. We just left Haiti on Friday. We will be to the U.S. where we're addressing you to all of us. So that was an answered uh, prayer. Very difficult thing to get to the life on the mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, boys and girls, for uh, waiting until Mr. Carter can talk, and you may tiptoe back to Amy. We'll continue by singing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Please stand if you're if you're able to stand. Oh, verses one, three, and five, and it's also found on page two eleven in the hymnal.
Lord, please be seated. Would you please join me in saying our prayer of confession? Let us pray. God of amazing surprises, we are rushing headlong into this season of buying, giving grief. We want to think of the holiday as delightful, but we have a tendency to make it a time of the highest stress. We overschedule our time, overdraw our resources, ignore those moments in which we could just relax and have quiet time with our families and with you. We blame it on everything else but our own decision making. The reality is that your love should be foundation, the base from which we celebrate. Our watchfulness is not necessarily about what is to happen, but rather should be on the ways in which we order our lives, ways that block out your love and your healing power. Forgive us for our stubborn in on maintaining schedule rather than focusing on our love. Heal us, strengthen us, and make us watchful over our faith in you. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. And our words of assurance tell us, watch, wait. God is bringing to you new hope and peace. It is a gift given especially for you, one that you cannot earn. It's a gift. Praise be to the giver of all gifts, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we'll have our joys and concerns. Do we have any joys or concerns at this time? Edie. Um, we had the pleasure of having my granddaughter from Maine with her husband and new baby from the United States. Wonderful. We also have a baby, so at the same time, we're visiting. So we have a great baby in June. A great so grandbaby in June. Praise God. Excellent. Okay. Uh, any other joys or concerns? Luann. Susan, I jumped right over you from our Sunday school list, so I'm coming back to you. Um, last week I missed two birthdays on the birthday list, um, Mike Muriak and Ray Hoffa. Um, and Judy read a verse um, this morning that she, it means a lot to her, and it says, God, um, God unfailing love. Um, the Andersons we came back safely from um, Florida, and Bonnie and John got to spend time with Matt and their granddaughter Faith. Um, and traveling mercies, Kim. Well, Pastor Monica talked about the, the accident, um, and thankfully <coughs> they weren't involved with it either. Um, and also, there was praise for the innocence of children. And. Um, Aaron talked about the family that got out of Haiti safely. And Isaac got his first buck this year. <laughs> For everyone who helped with the decorating of the church, we had a really good time. We laughed and talked, and we just had a good time. And uh, Stacy really is a good decorator. She helped a lot with the tree and, and the windows. <laughs> Several messages and gave me some new little pieces of Paul. 
keeping your heart good to make sure that he is making the right decision. Okay, thank you, Susan. Any other joys or concerns? Yes. Good, good. Yes. And for, for Chris K. Chris K. Okay, any other joys or concerns? Been happy so far. Yes. joys or concerns. Yeah. It's wonderful to be able to be back in and worshiping together with everyone. Yes. And to remind us that Jesus is still coming again. Yes. Amen. It's great to see, well, I shouldn't say just necessarily new faces, but um, I'll just say new faces. Yeah. So it's great to have more people here in the congregation. So I want to say welcome, and it's great to have you here. Okay, any other joys or concerns? Okay, let us turn to the Lord in prayer as we have quiet meditation for those on our prayer list, for those that we said aloud, and for those that we name silently in our hearts. Let us pray. Lord of hope, you bless our lives every day. We sometimes forget that all these blessings come from you, and we overlook them or decide that we just deserve all the wonderful things that come our way. It seems that every year the push of the commercial holiday expectation comes earlier and earlier. By the time we approach the true holy day, we are exhausted. We cannot gather the strength to praise you. Make us ready, Lord. Slow us down and help us to find release from the demands. Enable us to make decisions that will build hope and community rather than foster greed and selfishness. Help us reach out to others with gifts of kindness and peace. Enter our hearts, not with demands, but with a gentle reminder of the peace you bring. 
For we ask this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll give of our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. God of peace and justice, in the past year we have once again witnessed the fruits of war, lives cut short, children made orphans, homes devastated and hearts broken. We pray to see the day that Isaiah saw in his heart when swords are pounded into plowshares. These gifts we give this morning, may they be used to make human hearts ready for peace and for the reign of your Son, in his holy name we pray, amen. We'll continue by singing Emmanuel, Emmanuel.
the scriptures today, we start with Romans chapter 13, verses 11 through 14. <coughs> Excuse me. Besides this, you know what hour it is, how it is full time for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. Let us then cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us conduct ourselves becomingly as in the day, not in revealing in drunkenness, not in debauchery or licentiousness, not in quarreling or jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And now we go to Matthew chapter 24, verses 36 through 44. But of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father only. As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. <coughs> then the two men will be in the field. One is taken and one is left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One is taken and one is left. Watch therefore, for, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the householder had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have watched and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. May you be blessed by this reading of the God's holy word. Our message today is entitled, Waiting on a Savior. A hope, a promise. Happy New Year! Yes, this is the new year of our church. So our church new year begins with Advent. So, now I'm not skipping an entire whole month here when I say Happy New Year. It's the beginning of the church year. It's a time to look back and say, well, how did we do? And to look ahead and daydream about what we can do better. There are new opportunities to break with the past because the season of anticipation and expectation is here. For some, the race is on. Believe it or not, Advent is when we're supposed to focus on repentance, a, chan a change in what we do and contemplation on how we can live out God's plan in a better way. Our EMA, or our Emergency Medical Association, has done an excellent job of warning us of potential threats from weather-related events. That being said, what is your attitude about readiness? Are you prepared for the unexpected? The news is full of stories concerning natural disasters and cleanup after flooding, tornadoes, hurricanes, and wildfires. If a warning is heard and heeded, being prepared can save our lives. The gospel informs us to tune in to God's warnings then we won't be caught off guard when moral disasters swoop down on us unexpectedly. We can avoid the whirlwinds of judgment by inhaling those life-giving gusts from the Spirit of God. Let's face it, this season can be stressful and frustrating, but it should be a simple celebration of the birth of Christ. There are so many people who celebrate Christmas without celebrating Christ. It's funny, really. They don't believe in Jesus, yet they go into debt to celebrate his birth. Do you get it? They don't believe in him, 
yet they celebrate it religiously. Dr. David Jeremiah counsels us to stop thinking about Christmas and to focus on Christ. Every year, we habitually spend weeks getting ready, just like at Thanksgiving. We're hard at work preparing for a perfect holiday. We plan and organize and bake and shop and cook and decorate and wrap. During preparations, we seem to lose what this season is about. Our to-do lists make us feel like we're being pulled in many different directions at once. This season changes our relationships and brings out the best and the worst in people. It's difficult to pull back and to just keep it simple. Unless you've readied your hearts to be filled with the hope of Advent. It's outrageous to think that we flood this season with stories about a Grinch and we sing about Grandma's demise after a close encounter with some reindeer. Exactly what are we celebrating? We prepare with the oldest of traditions, but never bring God into the equation. Like a month-long shopping spree, we are maliciously murder our bank accounts, we gain anywhere from seven to 10 pounds from overindulging. The stress of braving the crowds and traffic just to find that one of a kind gift and get pushed around for the effect. For many who faithfully observe a that version of Christmas, they set themselves up for a season of disappointment, depression, stress, anxiety, and even anger. Bah humbug. Christmas hardly ever measures up to our fantasies. Even for those who manage to have some of their Christmas wishes filled, the season is over very quickly, and we're left dazed and confused. Lord, I pray that we all can be underachievers this year. So instead of preparing to live out a holy nightmare, we can sing, O Holy Night, instead. The Advent we celebrate at church, the one that has nothing to do with the number of shopping days left till Christmas, is the remedy. The hanging of the greens, the placement of the poinsettias, the lighting of the first Advent candle, all these invite us to dream dreams of a better world, to allow expectant visions that have nothing to do with sugar plum fairies that dance in our heads. Advent invites us to fill the cup of today with a full measure of tomorrow. Both the passage from Isaiah and the words from the Gospel of Matthew express hope for a different, brighter future. We need to change our approach to the chaos the holiday brings and prepare our hearts for Jesus. The timing is right to be hopeful that peace can become a way of life, that we can be joyful no matter the circumstances, grateful for God's grace, and bring to bear the power of sharing the love that God is providing in the greatest of gifts, contained in the smallest of packages, wrapped in the simplest of ways, found in the humblest of places. God sent his son on a rescue mission to seek us out and to save us by bringing salvation to the whole world. Yet, it's no secret, most of us are terrible at waiting. We hate standing in line sitting in traffic, even waiting for water to boil. Brad Paisley wrote a song a couple, years ago, a couple years ago called Waiting on a Woman. Now it's a comical yet serious ballad about a conversation between an older gentleman who's been married for a long time and a young man who was a newly married man. 
On a bench at the mall, the older man sits down alongside of the young man and asks, waiting on a woman? The young man says, yes, and you? Yeah, says the older man, since 1952. The song goes on to explain, though, that through all the waiting over all the years, the wait was worth every minute. The early Christians watched and prepared. They'd been expecting Jesus to return since he rose from the dead. For this reason, the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke devote a section of their text to urge Christian congregations to stay awake, to be prepared, and wait with anticipation for Jesus' return. If they aren't watching and waiting, Matthew suggests they may very well miss God's very special event. So it would be advantageous for us to pay attention to God's promise as we wait on a savior. The trouble is, we're still waiting. 2,000 years is an awfully long time to continuously prepare and repent, prepare and repent. In fact, there are some who aren't waiting anymore, which means that Jesus warns to be ready stand a pretty good chance of falling on deaf ears. Jesus tells us, no one will know the time and place of his return, not even him. He communicates to us how it may happen that two are together, then they're not, that supernaturally one is gone and the other is left behind. Jesus underscores again that the Son of Man will come at an unexpected hour. Our lives are filled with unexpected events. They're not easy, especially when the event is tragic. We need to be courageous because sometimes we'll have to be painfully wait to see God at work. Yet, his promise throughout scripture is that he meets us at the time of our greatest need and accompanies us in the most difficult of circumstances. Emmanuel, God, is with us. Jesus wants his followers to be alert, but not so obsessed about the day or the hour that they forget to engage with the world by promoting our faith with Jesus' simple message of hope. Waiting may be difficult, but coming together helps ease that burden. It helps us see God at work in the ups and the downs of life. It's comforting to know that we're not alone. We hear God's words of advice and encouragement during Advent from the living, breathing Word of God. We come together to help one another, knowing that God's greatest gift is the one wrapped in the truth of the promise of hope. Advent gives us an opportunity to help those that have difficulty seeing God because of the struggles they suddenly, unexpectedly go through. By sharing the good news of Jesus' birth, they can better understand God's love. Despite our divisions, we are joined together by God's promise that he will be with us as we seek the new beginning Advent brings. No one knows when tragedy will strike. No one knows when an incredible blessing may occur. But we do know this, God is there. It's apparent to us, maybe not to others, but we can help sharing God's gracious hope it's contagious when others see Christ working in us through our actions and words. It's human nature to want such a beautiful thing. Jesus reminds us that he is Lord of all. So we must trust him that he will bring all things to a good end. But in the meantime, we stand together in courage and compassion sharing the love that God gives to us.
It's the trademark of our faith. It's the promise that rings true. Fear not. I am with you always. Don't despair, but rejoice. That's what Advent is all about. Advent challenges us to hear and believe the promise of Emmanuel, God with us. Advent reminds us that God often breaks into our lives unexpectedly. We cannot know the time or the day or the next encounter. Will it be a joyful experience of forgiveness and peace or a call to repentance and responsibility? That we do not know. So folks, the greens are hung, the poinsettias share their beauty, the bells have been rung, <coughs> the first advent candle has been lit, and the tree is in its place. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Well, not quite yet, but for some, the race has just begun. So friends, remember as you prepare, Keep it simple. Make Advent about waiting on a Savior. With the promise of hope, it will be so worth the wait. May God bless you with the hearing of his word. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Monica. Would you please stand if you're able and we'll sing our final hymn uh, found on page 196 in the red hymnal, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. <laughs> Through all the corners of the world, God is bringing God's blessing. Be ready, watch, for the time is near. Salvation is at hand. Be at peace in the arms and the love of God. Amen. Amen.